Okay, let's make some spreaders to hold the sides in our mold. As you can see, there is a lower bout spreader, an upper bout spreader, and um, something to pinch the waist in at the middle. So I start with simply a three quarter inch block of particle board. You could also use MDF or plywood. Here I'm just tracing the outline of the mold in the lower bout region onto the particle board. Then I take that to the bandsaw and I cut just outside the line that I created. And I go back to my mold and I'm going to place some 80 grit sandpaper onto the lower bout section of the mold. And that way I can fine tune the, the shape. I can get the, that exact shape of the mold onto my piece of uh, particle board. So I sand away until all the high spots are gone. And now as you see here, I've taken that one piece that I've sanded to that perfect shape and I've duplicated it into six pieces the same way that I did on the making a guitar mold video. So if you go back and you watch that, you'll see how to sort of duplicate pieces like that. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm checking the fit of every one of those six pieces. I'm checking the fit on the mold, and as you can see, when I flip it around to this side, it's very poor fit. But when I flip it back to this side, it's a very tight fit. There's, there's no gaps whatsoever. And the reason I want to do that is I just want to figure out which side, which orientation is the correct way to hold this piece. So that when I glue all these pieces together, I'm gluing them in the correct orientation. Meaning that all of those area, all of those arrows that I've drawn are on the same side as I uh, sandwich them together. Okay, so moving on from that, now we have uh, our turnbuckle. So this is a regular hardware store variety turnbuckle, and I've clamped it to my workbench because I'm going to cut the eye of the turnbuckle, or that little circle doohickey on the end. I'm going to cut that off with an abrasive wheel and a Dremel tool. Of course, you could also use a hacksaw to do this. Okay, and here I'm just checking to see how hot it is. Uh, after cutting off the eye, uh, it really heats up the turnbuckle, so it's good to check that before you take the clamps off and turn it around. And then, of course, I do the same thing. I'm going to cut the eye off the other side. Okay, so now it's been uh, a little over 45 minutes, so I can take the blocks out of their vices and I'm going to find the center of each block on the flat side. The way I do that is I take a ruler or some sort of straight edge and line it up with the corners and draw an X. The center of the X is the center of the block. Now I need to find a drill bit that either matches the diameter of the threads or is slightly larger. 
going to drill a hole. Hopefully your drill bit has a brad point on it. Makes it a little easier to center over that X. And the hole I'm drilling is um, about three quarters of an inch. It is probably a, a good depth to shoot for. Okay, so just to hold these blocks in place, I'm going to epoxy them in their holes. And so I'm mixing up some JB Weld epoxy. This happens to be a six hour epoxy. You can, you can use a variety of, of epoxies for this, anything that works with uh, metal to wood contact. Here I'm just marking where the threads exit the block. That way, when I put the epoxy on the threads, I don't get the epoxy all over the portion of the threads um, that are outside of the block. Here I'm just, with a little stick, I'm adding a little extra epoxy around the edges. Okay, so this is actually an old um, lower bout spreader that I've had for probably about three years. And as you can see, the cork, adhesive-backed cork that I put on the, on the uh, faces of them has really gotten torn up. So for the cork on these, I got uh, eighth of an inch, so it's a little bit thicker cork, and we're going to actually glue it onto the surface rather than use the adhesive backed stuff. I put the glue on the cork backing and I use the spreader to clamp everything in place. And I'm going to let that sit for a while. So this sat for at least 45 minutes and now I've taken it out and I'm trimming the excess. Okay, one final touch. Um, I'm going to add adhesive backed 120 grit sandpaper to the cork. And, and I'm, I'm trimming off the ends here. And the reason I add the sandpaper is just to help hold, it helps to uh, hold the sides into the mold just a little bit better just by adding that grit. That way um, you really don't want things, your sides to be sliding around when they're in the mold. So just a little extra assurance with the sandpaper. Okay, so moving on to the waste spreader. I'm not gonna go through the whole process of making it because it's really quite simple. I'm just gonna show you it and tell you about it. So it's two pieces of three quarter inch, um, could be plywood, could be MDF could be particle board and I drill a hole down the middle of each piece and so that I can run a lag bolt through it and as you notice the ends of the pieces are angled and then I just add a wing nut to the end and turning that wing nut is what pulls those two pieces together Pinches the side at the waist. And so, of course, I, I do the upper bout just like I did the lower bout, and this is what the whole thing will look like when you're done. That waist spreader in the middle, keep in mind I don't use that too often. It, what's really important is the upper bout and the lower bout spreaders. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and you get something out of it and you're really uh, making progress on your projects. Mm -hmm.